It's called Something of the Cruelest. And it's called Something of the Cruelest because these are compiled of poems that I write every day in the month of April. How many <laughs> nano poems are there? Uh, uh, National Poetry Writing Month. Hey? Uh, uh, National Poetry Writing Month, uh, uh, where you write uh, well, it, 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 with people from all over, you write a poem a day. And so I've been doing this now for five or six years, and so uh, 30 of them, you know, in April, and so I've been selecting them for this book. Anyway, this kind of goes with that first poem. This is a poem called Burial. Under the burning stones, between the skins of mud flats and the clay tablets of a trash abandoned river, I see you, mounds of the living under the flesh of the dead, piquant wax of your shreds, the ragged flags, a putrid longing to belong to sing once again a hallowed song of self in a place under the open freeway lanes, a voice in the rush of rush, a bare tunnel asking the question, what is buried here? Who thrusts out among the living chalk? Who answers? An unasked question. All of America is an Indian burial mound. Zen Buddhist master. He was a philosopher. He's also a visual artist. Louis Cervantes, he and his wife Susan Cervantes started the Presida Eyes Mural Center responsible for over 60 of the murals of the Mission District in San Francisco. He's an artist. So these two poems are for him. First thought. First thought, best thought, you had taught me. A river runs through it the foot of the soul standing stubbornly in the freeze, all the shards of ice crumpling up the banks, what survives in the ignorance. Play it away. Be ceremony. Be a lit candle to what blows you. Outside, the sun gives a favorite present. Mountain nests in ironic meadows. Otter takes off her shoes, the small hands of her feet reaching, reaching still. Far away, people are dying. Crisp one dollar bills fold another life. You taught me to care in the moment, carve day into light or something moving in the west that doesn't destroy us. Look again in the coming summer. 
the cruelest month alive, still eats up the hours. Regret is an uneven hand, a rough palm at the cheek, tender and callous. I drink another glass of water, turn on the tap for what grows, for you, for what lasts, for the last and first found thought of you. And uh, this one, coming back to the Bay Area, I just walked away from my job in Boulder and decided I want to come home, San Francisco, I left my heart here. Mm. This is the first poem I wrote, coming back. This is Beat. San Francisco streets belong to me. My placenta in some fish and a fish and a bigger catch here. Not sitting on the dock of a bay, this bay here, this way of loving, this grace, this freedom from the show of pain or dissatisfaction, of hesitation or incongruity. Just you and me, my Cassidy, my daisy behind the inner ear. Yes, this listening, this indigenous inheritance. I buy a crystal from the corner cellar, the retired masseuse hippie we smile into another rainbow bridge. Me and Cassidy and the open flower of a book the open eyes of poetry, that tearing on the page. Listen, a thousand harps in the key of city lights chime on a sacred rising. Ten thousand strands of beads strung on a prayer. This hand, now, the casual gifting of another meal. I want this now, the one last grace, to never fall, to play this now and do it all. This is beat, the way, the way, the way, be an artist, do it now. to the table of contents. <laughs> Since 30 years later, it's not in the section I thought it was. <laughs> These are companion poems, Crow. It's about a 30 year difference between them. She started and shot from the pine then brilliantly settled in the west field and sunned herself purple. I saw myself, twig and rasp, dry and breath and ammonia smelling. 
Women taught me to clean and then build my own house. Before men came, they whispered, no good polished oak. Learn hammer and Phillips, learn socket and rivet. I ran over rocks and gravel they placed by hand, leaving burly arguments to fester the bedrooms with my best jeans, a 20, and a shepherd pup, I ran, flushed and shadowed by no one. Alone, I settled, stiff in mouth, with the words women gave me. And this one, sunshine knife blades. What happens after you take that hitchhike? Sunshine knife blades. Fifteen years old in five-year-old jeans. My shepherd pup. My traveling rainbow. My loyal thumb bulging with desire. My road rutted and rutting. My day ahead sorrow. My moccasined feet rolling in small kisses of bruising. A cartography of touch languishing over the tan. He put his necklace of anger safe at my throat. My ivory recorder, a still white bird in my lap. An avenue of alcoholic vapor fill the fear. In those days, our past, the past was our smile. Innocence was a gumball treasure, and all our pockets were picked. Wedded, whelped, well on our way out. We hemmed up the fortune of our flounce and folded into ourselves, jackknife on a dare and glinting. And uh, the last poem in this manuscript, in, um, this new book that's coming out next fall, uh, although I think I want to delay it until spring. Enough of these fall, fall publications, and then you, 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 I think it's better to have a new book in April. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then when the contests come around, you know, you're too late for everything. <laughs> then you don't qualify for the next year. Anyway, uh, this is a poem called Integrity. Because love is possible and so is integrity. Yours is in the integrity of flint, of steel, of iron. Yours is the integrity of birds flocking, whales in their loving pods. Yours is the integrity of sand, what moves with the will of you, all your sweet sweat your simple construction. I love the sudden fill of you, your swell and sway. I love how you do what you say. You slay me with your truth. I love the way we fit together as if I were your seed. I love the far away look in your multicolored eyes, the land and sea of you. I love the way you look at me, that ancient shore. I love how I am more with you, your carbon, the filaments of your fine hair. I love how you hold me together, how fast and vast the ocean of this love in its gentle tide, the integrity of flesh, of salt, 
Five years, every Tuesday night, San Jose State, I wandered in the first day without even being in roll, Bob B. Bob. I sat in the first uh, row. He took the roll, and I didn't answer, and being the only Chicana, only dark person in the class, you know, he, I, I'm sure I was noticeable. And he he kind of looked at me and then kind of shrugged like, okay, you're not in, what's your name? And he hand wrote my name on the roll, and you know, uh, there was room, so he let me stay. And you know, eventually I ended up actually registering for San Jose State and becoming a student uh, after every Tuesday night, seven o'clock. Bob's workshop, it was a lot like, uh, as I described it, it was a lot like, uh, you walk in and he unzips his head and opens up his brain and you just sort of cock your ear and listen. And, you know, he talks about taking walks and looking at the architecture of the buildings. And there was something about the architecture, and he doesn't know why it's connected to this line. Oh, love, this is something. Oh, gosh, I wasn't planning to quote Bob, and now it's freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it ended up being a poem in praise. Uh, uh, years later, all oh, love, this is something, and is it for uh, meditations on love or need us? Ah, this is fear and syllables. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, incredible talks, just unzipping his head. And thank you, Bob. Uh, this is a poem uh, uh, I wrote uh, after getting a manuscript of Federico Garcia, Love, uh, Garcia Lorca's love poems, homoerotic sonnets, sonetos uh, uh, de amor oscuro, uh, uh, that Francisco Alagón and another UC Berkeley student, Francisco Aragón, had gone to Spain and gotten this manuscript and, and uh, uh, translated it. And in the translation, something was lost. One of the poems, the line, which was the first line, love of my flesh, living death, which was translated, dear heart, <laughs> my, my life. And I'm like, no, love of my flesh, carne. Carne is not dear heart. <laughs> <laughs> and for homoerotic sonnets, I mean, they assassinated Lorca as much because of his homosexuality as his politics, which I couldn't figure out from the poems anyway. You know, uh, uh, anyway, love of my flesh, living death. You know, so, so anyway, I, had to, I just had to preserve that line somewhere. Uh, uh, so I wrote a poem using the line, love of my flesh, living death. And now the Poetry Foundation and others uh, 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 have this uh, um, uh, thing where, where they're, they're, the, all of the high school students have a competition and they have to memorize a poem and recite it. So they're making these kids go to these, this site and choose a poem just from the list and, and recite, memorize and then recite in public the poem, you know. And, and the, it, there's four of my poems and there are no poems I ever read out loud because some poems are meant to be, you know, processed in that neocortex and not in that, you know, inner ear going in through your ear and being processed that way, right? You know, and so, poor kids. So anyway, I hope this is being videotaped because these kids are being videotaped and having to read it so now they could go on YouTube and see how I read the poem so they can practice. <laughs> Love of my flesh, living death. Once, I wasn't always so plain. 
I was strewn feathers on a cross of doom, an expanse of ocean at my feet, garlands of gulls, sirens and gulls. They couldn't tame you. You know as well as they. To be a dove is to bear the falcon at your breast, your nights, your seas. My fear is simple, heart-faced, above a flare of etchings, a lineage in letters, my sudden stare. It's you, it's you, sang the heart upon its mantle pelvis, blush of my breath, catch of my sea, beautiful bird, it's you. Two great publications this last uh, season. Uh, this is a uh, Every Man's Pocketbook uh, edition of Villanelle's brand new. This is the review preview copy just out. Uh, 85 poets, uh, all Villanelle's. This is one I wrote uh, uh, to raise funds for Katrina. Uh, to raise funds in particular for New Orleans, not going through Red Cross, but going through Brian Wilson, not the, which, not the ball player, but Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys, was matching $100 for every $100 that you, you know, donate. Uh, uh, and so I wrote the poem, Raising Funds, Poets Raising Funds for New Orleans. And so I thought, well, I have to raise, be, raise $100 because not only will he match, a, donate $100 because not only will he match $100, Brian Wilson will call me on the phone from the beach <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> so he called me and I said, I want to write you, I want to read you a poem I wrote for, you know, for Katrina. He says, you want to read me a poem that you wrote? I said, yes. He said, Oh, that won't be necessary. <laughs> I said, no, 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 I'd really like to read you this poem. A poem you wrote? No, that won't be necessary. After about the fourth time, finally I told him, well, it's for Clarence Gatemouth Brown, which is true, I wrote it for Clarence Gatemouth Brown, who died of a broken heart, really, after being three days in a boat uh, wandering around until he was finally found, all of his guitars, everything. Blue, wonderful blues guitars, he died of pneumonia uh, that week. A blue wake for New Orleans, for Clarence Gatemouth Brown. There was a rhyming city on a blue bayou till a wicked wind laid waste. A nothing sound in a city's soul and a nothing you can do. There was a windy will and a blue horn. You, a single name that was left in haste. There was a rhyming city on a blue bayou. There is a wailing city, a water high, and you left amid the residue up to your waist. A nothing sound in a city's soul and a nothing you can do. There was a loving city in a blue hoodoo through a hard knock school, a river's waste. There was a rhyming city on a blue bayou, a full moon hue, a relation to do, jeweling on a spider's bed, so chaste, a nothing sound in a city's soul, and a nothing you can do. There is a silent city, a blue shirt crew, the yellow vest of savior, Waits. There was a rhyming city on a blue bayou, a nothing sound in a city soul, and a nothing you can do. Okay, Ciento, 100, 100 word love poems. What's your favorite number? From 1 to 100. 76. 
because I heard that one first. <laughs> 76. <laughs> These are meditations. I would go to a, a word meditations on love. I would go to a site on Thursday, get a word, and I wouldn't know what the word would be, and I had to write 100 words, so I figured it'd be a poem. I figured it'd be a love poem. And this week, the word was genius. These are a lot like tarot cards, so it's like a 100 words to the genius of you. Loving you is pure genius. Smartest thing I've ever done. It's the O in my mega, the alpha to this N. It's Robert Johnson playing my heart below her. Loving you explains it all. My unified field, my saliva strings between the knees, my drool over you, a Jackson Pollock expression. Loving you is genius. Hans Beta refusing to make the neutron bomb. Star Wars, fake suns in some other world of us. It's the noblest prize I'll ever win. Shining as I come to know you, rust free. Loving you is quantum mechanics made simple, is charmed and quirky. <laughs> Another number, one to 100. Somebody said something, five? Nine? Nine? Oh. Nine? Nine and then 25, I heard. Nine, radiant. 100 words to radiant. Again, these are like tarot cards. You, in the radiant crepuscular light, your succulent heart, sex sucked lips, your twining hair, all halo and sash. You fill like the hummingbird, suckle, stay. I am radiant to imagine you, half animal, half staff of ember. Your lightning rays of mirth, unimaginable in the dark, in other than holy. You in a spirit land, whisked away to grace my hand. The giving night, the airy dawn, the awakening from withdrawal. As the valley hunkers, mist hangs around her love. River, I flow with you, fog struck and caught in your aperture. Your appetite for me, your blessing, kiss, eyes, windstruck, radiant. So, 25? Who, who wanted 25? Or no one wanted 25? Back there, 25? I gotta see you where this Jerome thing won't work. <laughs> <laughs> kaleidoscope. 100 words to the kaleidoscope of you. Baby, let me twist your tube. Let me dial you up a new dimension. Let me see you in a thousand lights. Let me eye you into infinity. Let your leg, lips and legs go akimbo. Give all your smallest bits to me. Let me gaze through you into your he art, into the many factors, into the paradise of your multiple rainbows, each color, each note in us inner song, in the inner song, each fine splice of you served up on a spinning plate. Let me handle your changes, ride past your infinite divisions. Let me turn you around, help me see through you. 
Another number, 1 to 100. Wow. Wow. 42, 42, 42, 42. Kiss. 100 words for your word. Kiss. What would it take to kiss? A plane trip? A new outfit? Benign weaponry? A silken parachute? Box of coal as consolation? What will it take? to kiss that smile that breaks at your guarded silo shore. What will it take to kiss words off? Type my signature across your chest, crush in fur, bathe in life, sweat and substance. What word will it take to silence words that duck and cover of the heart? Kiss and lie in your imagined earth, kissing your matter from the maw. Let me put my lips to your fire, surround your words for the final surrender. Another number. Ocho. 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 Yeah, that's the tactic. Let's be, let's break the law, be bilingual. <laughs> For all those people and officials and others who have, don't know their history and have never read the Treaty of Guadalupe, Dalgo. Uh, this one is in a haiku. It's 100 words and it's nine haiku. Uh, 100 words and nine haiku into the distraction of you. Your face. Who's Ocho? Over there. Oh. <laughs> Your face, distraction, distracting as a hickey, you, me, everywhere. Too darn many forms of you, earth, air, fire, water, your enormous sea. Opening into dawn, this talking, fast walking, slow touching, silence. Tree limbs branching out, each flowering memory in hummingbird's dream. This autumn burning, you distract me, your fine smoke from some ancient source. Cloud banks, frost flies, long red-faced leaves, you leave me one on some dream window. You, your long rainbow of distraction, every hue a new, new world too. Eucalyptus pods, serendipitously sweet sensitivities. Two windows, one world, are passing through, expands us, a distraction, you. Uh, maybe one more? 69. 69. <laughs> oh, you better not say that one in English. I know. 69. <laughs> I didn't do these to the numbers. I didn't even know this was going to be a book. I didn't even write these in, but under my own name. <laughs> I just wrote down a little lines. <gasps> Oops, I didn't know anyone was going to read this, much less read it and follow it. I just read this. 100 words of goodbye. <laughs> Uh, these are for sale. Uh, perfect Valentine's Day gift. 100 <laughs> poems. There's sure to be a poem to fit every occasion. <laughs> dedicate the number of the poem to whoever the book is for. Valentine's Day is coming up. Cheap gift. 100 words of goodbye. Just 100 words of goodbye. This first day taken. This first new year, extravagant in its pleasure of red, its greenly hills, it's winding down. It's winding down to you and past, past 
the warmth of your shoulder, your stroke, past the filigree of smiling eyes, your strong arm wrung. I'm writing 100 words for goodbye. I'm staying on in my future, not a perfect tense. I'm holding on to the blue perfect past of you. I'm addressing your finest nature. I'm appealing to the head of your heart. I am breaking some pact of independence, some right to bear arms. And since I got here late, any requests? Last poem? <laughs> 58. Oh, another one from there? 58, that wasn't the question, but let's see what we have here. 58, who's 58? Raise your hand so I can see you. Okay, 58. Perception, 100 words to the perception of you. I have this perception. You are who you are, been where you've been. I know. I know what anyone knows, short of nothing. I know birds return, not to me. I know what I feel, what hurts, the shape of you on top of me. Perception, like me, once extinct, now an insurrection of knowledge. Now I percolate through dreams. You dream me into cloth, into your warmth beside you. <coughs> Whatever sign do I need? So plainly, snow tracks, fallen cake crumbs for you, messages that pass through mountains, pass through diamond and mist, waves of missing you, particles change. And... <coughs> so I'm one more? Yeah? Uh, I'll just read a, a few, um, I'll just read a short section, the sections from a long home coffee that's in this book that I noticed you have here, Drive. There's not very many copies of this, I only have one in my possession, so uh, get them uh, if you can. Five books in one. Uh, this is a long docu-poem. Um, <coughs> covers a massacre that happened in Chiapas in Mexico, among other things. Coffee, one. In Guatemala, the black buzzard has replaced the quetzal as the national bird. The shadow of a man glides across the countryside, over the deforested plantations. A death cross burnishes history into myth as it scours the medicinal land into coffee. Burial mounds that could be sites of unexcavated knowledge hold only blasted feathers and the molding bones of freedom. Golden epaulets glint in the fluorescent offices. Crystal skulls shine in the eyes of the man with the machete within the sight of an AK-47 under the rubble of the ruling class. A human heart beats in the palm. The tumba of ritual mercy drums in the thunderclap. A hurricane wind sounds the concha. In Quetzaltenango, foreign interests plot the futures of Mayan hands and ink and gold while on Wall Street, the black sludge of a people trickles through the cappuccino machines like hissing snakes. Two, 
Akhtiar, December 22nd, 1997. Bloody mud sucks the plastic sandals of a child. Vela's gutter through the sage prayers in the little church blasted through with 22 splintered holes the size of a baby's tender fist. Melon heads pop and the hacking drum of a machete count meeting bone counts down the hours of matanza while somewhere a telephone rings off the hook. The vicar of the diocese calls in 20 minute intervals. 140 federales stand smoking in the twilight. <coughs> At their feet, the trampled harvest of peasants gleams through the saturated leaves. Omero, Tovia, Cristiani picks up the phone. I've notified General Jorge Gamboa Solis. Everything is under control. There is no massacre in Actial. And he places the receiver again off the cradle on the well ordered desk. Meanwhile, a young Sotzil bloodies her knuckles scratching the hole in the adobe wall of a cave feathered with hogwad fur where 14 women and children wait, shivering in the dark. An infant picks up the call. The first woman in line gazes into the coked up eyes of her assassin, projecting his automatic weapon into the ear of the whimpering baby at her breast. 500 years of history gets written in her eyes as a Sotzil mother wedges her sleeping newborn into the hole. She spits on the reddening dirt and covers her moose like a cat. Forty-five pair of shoes get lost in a yow. Matted hair clings to the coffee plants. Another listening ear, another red seed, Another eye dislodged from its skull. I hear nothing happened in Akhtia. And if it did, no one knows who they were. The pre-press machine stands on the ridge of destiny, staring truth in the eye as men lie to the cameras. While 20 yards away, the survivors are speaking the names of the men paid $600 American, men with no families but a spoon and a copa, men with no names but the trademarks emblazoned across their chests and on their running shoes. I hear 45 graves being dug today. The women form a chain of hearts. They have dried the earth, baked with their tears. Each one carries a red mud brick from the killing floor, where the people were hacked into pieces the size of a bat. Here, the bat people, so sinners, will build a house for their dead and pray. Thank you very, very much.
Come back next week. We'll see Claudia right here. Thank you again.